I just finished my work day at the church and uh, I'm actually probably pretty sweaty and gross. Sorry if that messes with the video, but I'm really excited to tell you guys what my week of watching Pure Flix was like. So uh, let's talk about it. Oh yeah, don't be jealous. Welcome back to God's Filmmaker. My name is Winter and today I hope you're digging my classic ride what happens when you wreck your car. Today I'm finally giving my review part of the Pure Flix Challenge. The Pure Flix Challenge is a challenge I gave last week here on this channel and it was to watch nothing but Pure Flix for one week. And the reason for wanting to watch nothing but Pure Flix uh, was to get away from some of the secular stuff that we've been watching all the time and uh, give ourselves an opportunity to see if there's really some good Christian material out there. And I was really shocked by the results that I found and I actually tried to record this review on time a couple of days ago but I really hadn't fully formed my opinion yet and uh, I'm really glad that I waited because honestly this experience has been life changing and uh, I was not expecting that. My wife actually sent me looking for this church's which I had no idea where it was but I followed her directions and here we are. Seems to be a pretty popular place. Is there some ranch? Yeah. Gotta have your ranch. So a couple of Texas trade secrets for vlogging. Number one, when you vlog in the car, you can't have the AC on, so it's hot. Number two, driving a granny car already makes you drive slow, but having a camera too really makes you drive like a granny. All right, my family has been put to bed and I can talk to you guys about Pure Flix. There's a car going behind us. It's making noise. Don't know what to do. When you think about a web streaming platform, probably the first thing that comes to mind is just entertainment, entertainment value. That's exactly what I was thinking about when I began this challenge. I was just thinking about um, what am I gonna see? What, are, what am I gonna be entertained by? That's not what the value of this week has ended up being for me. The value of this week has ended up being, um, number one, a series of experiences. Uh, as we watched these movies uh, we and we watched some TV shows, we ran into some experiences that I wanna share with you guys here in a few minutes. But over Overwhelmingly, it's just been a spiritual transformation. Uh, when we watch secular media, there's always things coming in that could be a negative in our lives. It's always pollution, it's a sediment, if you will, that builds up in our hearts and uh, we get desensitized. We forget what it is that God wants us to think about stuff. You know, the Pure Flix challenge for me was over. It's been over a week and so for the past couple of days, uh, my wife and I have been able to watch whatever we wanted to watch and I've actually found myself watching Pure Flix quite a bit, but we still watched the show that we had been watching together before that we watched fairly often and uh, I was amazed at how offensive it was to my spirit as I was sitting there watching certain things, you know. All of a sudden, uh, you know, two people go off to sleep together and you're like, man, do not do that. That's, that's wrong, <laughs> you know. Uh, and the way that the world has, has brought you uh, into their storyline and made you almost to root for the wrong things. Uh, just sitting there watching this, I was, I was just amazed. To begin with, I want to talk about a movie I watched on my own called Audacity. Audacity is the story of a Christian comedian uh, who's only been saved about a year and he's struggling uh, with whether he should show love I realized I was looking at the mic. He's struggling with whether he should show love better by speaking up to people that are homosexual around him or by not saying anything. And uh, he has a dream that, uh, you know, he doesn't witness to somebody and they fall down an elevator shaft. And so I was blessed by this movie for t in a couple of different ways. Number one, it was addressing a very hard subject and it actually addresses it uh, in reality. It actually has uh, interviews that take place that are with real people off the street. It's with Ray Comfort. Um, and he talks to them about, uh, most of them about their own sexuality because most of them are, are coming from a homosexual viewpoint. Um, but he also talks to them 
about the Word of God, the law of God, um, and then it deals with whether or not you should address this subject. Now there are a few scenes in there where you either see some men holding hands or some women holding hands, um, and that's as far as it goes, which I thought was great on the part of Pure Flix and on the part of the filmmakers because they're able to address this issue without leading anyone down a path that could tempt them to sin, left behind. Now to me, this is a Christian movie classic. You know, like you have Indiana Jones in the secular world, to me you got left behind in the Christian world. It reminds us to be ready for the rapture, it reminds us to be watching uh, for what God's wanting to do, and I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching uh, Kirk Cameron's performance, I enjoyed watching the performance of whoever it was that played Nikolai Carpathia. That dude can go from like Boy Scout to evil in a scene, man, and it's really good. So uh, I just thought it was great, we enjoyed watching it, and it's good to have a little nostalgia for back when I was a teenager. Another movie my wife and I watched was Love Finds You in Charm. Believe it or not, I actually really enjoy romance movies. I know I'm a dude and people think dudes aren't supposed to enjoy that, but it takes a guy and a girl to have a great romance. And actually, this was a great movie. I enjoyed the way that it was shot. It had super high quality cinematography. It looked like one of the uh, Victorian movies that my wife likes to watch. One of the experiences that we had was we were watching this movie and uh, there's a part where this, this woman and another woman begin, begin to become really good friends. They become almost like sisters. Um, but sometimes people are a little funny in the way they portray it in a movie. And there's a minute where you could start to wonder, is there something more developing here? And what I really love is being able to go, eh, it's pure flicks, we don't have to worry about it. Now we come to what I spent most of the week actually watching and listening to, Answers in Genesis. Answers in Genesis is a whole section of pure flicks uh, that is devoted to basically this organization that teaches about creation. They they teach about um, overcoming all of these ideas that the world has sent. So basically all the proof that you've seen in the fossil record, all the proof that you've seen in the fossil record of millions of years and of uh, evolution and all that kind of stuff, most of that's just falsified evidence and the rest of it's misunderstood evidence. They go through this and they talk about what the reality is behind these things and they, they really give you an understanding of how you would even talk to somebody else who maybe was struggling with these issues. It's reinforcing that faith. They go back to the Bible, they talk about what the Bible says and then they go out and show how the fossil record and uh, all this other stuff basically proves what the Bible says and how so many of the things that uh, prove alternative viewpoints are actually not even accurate and not well handled as evidence. Do you believe? I can't tell you without spoiling it. You've got to watch this movie and uh, be ready because there's some surprises that'll catch you somewhere towards the end. The last movie we'll talk about tonight is God's Not Dead 2. This movie is by far one of the crown jewels in the collection of Pure Flix. God's Not Dead 2 faces issues that we are dealing with currently. I will warn you, watch the end of the credits. Every movie should have a scene after the credits, and so it has a scene after the credits. One of the experiences we had was finding out for ourselves, because I just didn't know this, that Melissa Joan Hart is actually an ardent Christian. It's a big turnaround from just knowing her as Sabrina the Teenage Witch. If you're thinking about making a Christian movie or if you're wishing there were Christian movies, you are not by yourself. There are lots of other people out there already making these, already dreaming up these ideas, and have we hit the highest mark yet? Probably not, but we are growing and we're getting somewhere. Now, there are some downsides. You won't see most of the big headliner Christian movies that you would think of on here. I didn't see Fireproof, I didn't see Courageous, uh, and considering that those type of movies are usually the ones that make up someone's entire Christian movie collection, I think that that's probably okay. With that being said, a Christian streaming platform, uh, you really need every movie you can get, particularly when there are great ones out there. One that was missing that I think is a fantastic movie is To Save a Life. Now, it actually may violate a couple of the content requirements of the platform, platform, but Beerflix is not 100% squeaky clean in that sense. It's got some things in there like uh, some old TV shows that are just generally family friendly. Uh, it's got a few uh, shows where it'll list language or some sensuality or whatever below, uh, but it really is extremely mild and it's almost never on there without some sort of a reason behind it. I would love to see those big headliners on there and I would love to see a couple more categories on there. First of all, when you pull up the app, recently watched should be the first thing that comes up because if you're in the middle of something, you have to go to your name, then you go to a menu option, and then recently viewed, 
And even then sometimes you'll watch a movie and when you finish it, it'll disappear from your recently watched, which I think is a bad feature because some of those movies you might want to watch again or, or you might have fallen asleep and it might have just finished the movie while you were asleep. They didn't have any kind of a category for sci-fi or a category for fantasy, um, which may just be because they don't want to imply that anything related to God is fiction. However, uh, for me, a staple of the stuff that I watch is sci-fi and fantasy, so I would have liked to have seen those categories on the platform. And then lastly, most infuriatingly, when you go to search on an Xbox, it has this bar across the top that has all of the alphabet laid out in one long strip instead of in a block. So typing out anything that you want to search takes forever because you have to go boop, 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 boop. Boop. Overall, this has been a fantastic experience. I love PureFlix. We're gonna end up keeping it at least for a while and, and uh, taking a break from one of our other streaming services so that we can fit it into our budget. Now, if you're someone more like me, maybe you're a YouTuber, maybe you're a, a small time filmmaker, I wanna challenge you within 30 days, 30 days of the day this is posted, to make a short film or a scene or anything that is in the genre you would like to see on Pure Flix. So for me, that's gonna include some science fiction fantasy kind of stuff, and I'm gonna make one. I'm gonna post it on this channel, probably on time. We'll see what I can do. And uh, most importantly, comment below. I wanna hear what you guys think. I wanna hear what's going on in your world. Some of y'all may have a fantastic uh, viewpoint on Christian filmmaking that I haven't even considered, so share it with me if you don't mind. God bless, and remember, you are God's filmmaker. If you'll excuse me for just a second, I've got to move my sound blanket and kill a, a spider because cause filmmaking in Texas. He's fast! Oh, he was pregnant. Oh, jeez. Uh oh.